when someone somewhere says something like, what I think we need is another web browser, at that point I would normally groan and just move on. However, things are a little bit different when it comes to the Brave web browser. Hello there, my name is Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. Today I want to talk to you about Brave and how it puts privacy up front and center. If you want to find out more, please let me explain. Historically, when we talk about a new web browser, it meant that some clever engineer somewhere wanted to build a better HTML, CSS rendering engine. They wanted to build a better, super fast JavaScript interpreter, and they wanted to throw that inside of a UI and call it a web browser. But today, the engine wars are basically over with the Chromium engine, which is called Blink, basically powers everything. It powers Chrome, uh, Opera, uh, Microsoft's Edge, Vivaldi and so on. There are some notable exceptions and those are Firefox and Apple Safari, but Brave uses Blink, the same engine that you find in Chrome. It's not special because of the engine, because of how it does the HTML rendering. It's special because it puts privacy up front and center. Now, most modern browsers do a good job of keeping you secure while you're browsing. There's universal support for secure HTTP connections. There's incognito tabs useful for when you're using a publicly accessible computer. There are various levels of sandboxing technology to stop you know, malicious scripts breaking out of one tab and stealing data from another tab. However, one area of privacy and security that has been slowly eroding over the last few years is that of advertising. Now you see, for advertising to be effective, it needs to be targeted. It's pointless showing me adverts about rock climbing equipment or baby strollers. But you show me an advert about the latest bit of tech and maybe, just maybe, I'll click on the advert. To send the right ad to the right people, advertisers need to build up a kind of profile about your web browsing activities. What you like and what you don't like. Now that in itself sounds harmless enough. In fact, it could even be useful. However, the tracking techniques that advertisers are using are getting more and more evasive every single day. Now, advertising is big money. Google has an annual revenue measured in the billions of dollars, $161 billion for 2019. Most of that money came from advertising. Sure, it sells apps and videos, uh, offers cloud services, you can buy uh, Pixel smartphones and so on, but most of that money came from advertising. Now, of course, the most drastic option available to users is to install some form of ad blocker and therefore block all ads, which means it blocks all the trackers it blocks all of the evasive uh, procedures and techniques that these companies use to try to build up a virtual profile about you. Now, of course, there are lots of ad blockers out there, but Brave makes it easy. In fact, Brave, it is the default behavior. Now, most advertising platforms use techniques to identify you and track you as you move across the web. Brave blocks all of that, allowing you to browse freely. As well as privacy advantages, there is actually also a performance boost because now you don't have to download all those extra advert images. There's not all that extra JavaScript. There's not all that extra tracking data. In fact, Brave say, according to their internal testing, that some major news sites load up up to six times faster on Brave than they do on Chrome, Safari or on Firefox. So by using Brave, basically you won't see any adverts on the websites that you visit. And that means that there is no trackers, no JavaScript running to try to build up this profile of you as you move across the web. However, that does leave the question, when you use an ad blocker, do you harm the publishers who rely on advert income? And the simple answer to that is yes. And for me, that's a huge downside. From every hobbyist who wants to fund their blog or they've got a YouTube channel or to every independent website that's free of corporate shackles like Android Authority, like Gary explains, advertising income is essential. And until now, personally, Gary of Gary Explains, I've not used an ad blocker because I know that good content isn't free and everybody needs to eat. But Brave has a surprising answer to this problem called Brave Rewards. Now, rather than tempting you to click on an advert, Brave anonymously calculates the amount of attention you give to each website that you visit. And then once a month, the Brave Rewards programs will compensate those sites you visited. It also allows you to tip creators directly and also remove sites that you don't actually want to support. 
Now the twist is that the currency behind the brave rewards isn't the US dollar or the euro or the Chinese yen, but in fact a cryptocurrency called the Basic Attention Token or BAT. The idea is that blockchain based digital advertising can offer a decentralized, transparent digital ad exchange. So obviously replacing the whole traditional advertising model of the internet is going to be a big job. So there are different stages to this uh, idea. Stage one is to get the Brave browser into the mainstream along with its built-in use of the basic attention token. And then stage two is for users, publishers and advertisers to use BAT as a means for funding advertising and a funding attention-based services. As the name applies, the value of a token is derived from or denominated from user attention. And that's the one commodity that you and I have to give while we're surfing the web. Now, like all cryptocurrencies, you need to keep your tokens in a wallet and Brave includes an anonymous wallet that is stored locally on your computer or on your mobile device. Now, in a future update, you'll be able to sync all those wallets across your devices using some form of online wallet service. At the moment, they stay local just inside of your web browser. Now, if you want to turn traditional currency into BATS, then you'll have to fund your wallet using a website and service called Uphold. Now, Uphold is a digital money platform with over a million users covering 50 currencies for commodities. Now, I'm always skeptical myself of digital money platforms in general. As for me, I found that buying tokens and coins can be relatively easy. However, converting them back into real cash can be a bit of a challenge. So to test Uphold, I linked my Brave wallet to my Uphold account. I went through the verification process, which includes identity checks and so on. And I funded my wallet with the grand sum of £10. That was then turned into 71.7 and then a big long number of BAT. And then that got credited to my account. Now you need to wait one day before you can withdraw the money. So after 24 hours, I took that 71.7 big long number of BAT and I sent it to a euro account that I have. And then in less than four hours, the money was actually in my account. So it seems in this case, you can actually do real world to crypto to crypto to real world exchanges. And it all seems to work without any problem. However, I did lose about one euro in the process, although Uphold does promise 0% training commissions, 0% fees on credit and debit card deposits and 0% on bank and crypto withdrawal, I guess I lost out during the exchange rates. Uphold is going to release a debit card that is linked with your account and you get a physical chip and pin card and of course you can use virtual cards for buying stuff online. It's a MasterCard which means it'll be accepted of course in millions of places across the world. Now it's all very well talking about overthrowing the advertising industry and uh, ad blockers but is Brave actually any good as a web browser? Well the good news is that it is. Now I did some testing for JavaScript and the performance of Brave is actually faster than Chrome and Firefox. However, interestingly, Microsoft's Edge is faster than every other browser that I tested. And when it comes to memory usage, Brave used the least amount of memory per tab, especially compared to Chrome, Firefox and Edge. So these are all good signs about the browsing experience that you will get. Another advantage of Brave's Chromium Roots is that you get access to the Chrome Web Store. When you click on the extensions option in the menu, you get taken directly to Google's Web Store. Not a copy or a cheap replica, but actually Google's real Web Store. That means that migrating to Brave from Chrome or Microsoft's Edge should be quite simple. You can also import your bookmarks from Edge, Chrome, Firefox, and so on. Now, of course, there's no way of importing your passwords. They should be securely encrypted inside of your web browser. However, if you are using a password manager like last pass or dash lane then they both work with brave without any problem now brave has become quickly part of my normal workflow and i use it every day for certain sites and certain tasks and the reasons to not switch to it fully are basically pretty much non-existent now brave is available on windows mac os linux ios and android i've tested it on all five platforms and the experience is as consistent as you'd expect across such a diverse set of platforms and certainly the same as any other browser that you may pick now if you want to try brave and i recommend that you do then you'll find and links to it in the description below. Okay, that's it. My name is Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you like these kind of videos, why not stick around by subscribing to the channel? Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.